In the previous modules, information of the user action, interactions and tool functions needed during the actual use of the tool were presented. We are now focusing on the software concept from another point of view, by shifting from the use of the software towards the knowledge consideration. This part of the abstract prototype has been developed to highlight the issues of knowledge representation and the reasoning established on the knowledge basis that will be included in the tool. First, we will discuss the main functions and the structure of the knowledge base. Afterwards, we will elaborate on the actual content to show how cases are included and can be managed by the knowledge base manager. As you did in the previous part of the session, please pay attention to the presented information and give your opinion in the discussion afterwards. It was already mentioned in the previous modules that we intend to develop a software tool which is actually a knowledge based system. Based on its knowledge embedded in a database, the software tool goes beyond the conventional reasoning mechanisms, but reasons as experts do by using and comparing with past cases. It is our assumption that in a situation of sufficient number of relevant cases, the designers can use either average information, extrapolations or estimates in terms of defining the new augmentation concepts. For this reason, it is expected that the cases provide cost information, energy usage and energy waste information, related to the past examples. In the process of interaction with the system, the designer can use this information for making the decision on the relevant ubiquitous controllers and their influence on the operational characteristics. These imply the main requirements for the knowledge representation and the arrangement of the knowledge base, namely that it has to be able to contain rather large numbers of cases. The knowledge base managers should be able to find the most appropriate cases based on given search patterns in a short while. It should provide alternatives for supporting the decision making of the designers, it should visually support the representation of the cases, and it should offer a mechanism for including new cases in the database. To indicate why we need a knowledge base for the tool, it seems to be expedient to recall the main functions the tool is designed for. We will clarify which functions of the tool should be supported by a knowledge base and in which form the knowledge base should be provided. Previously, the main functions of the tool have been sorted into four groups, according to the phases in which they are utilized by the designers. You remember that we differentiated functions for specifying the intended product characteristics, functions for finding the energy saving solutions, functions to adapt the new product histogram, and functions to calculate the trade-off and find a controller with the highest gains. In the first design phase, the objective is to search for products with similar characteristics as a new conceptual product. The tool is sending a search request to the database manager to retrieve cases with comparable product characteristics. The second phase is about finding solutions for energy saving. Based on various search actions, the tool should show multiple energy saving solutions. In this stage, we are not looking for product information, but interested in possible solutions and their characteristics and opportunities to save energy. In the third phase, the communication and information extracting from the database is needed to help the user in adjusting the use histogram for each selected solution and combination of solutions. To do this, a search request is sent to the knowledge base manager to gather information of past cases using these solutions. In the last phase, the objective of the tool is to calculate the trade-off. This action is supported by the knowledge base by offering the relevant calculation parameters. On the other hand, the trade-off results should also be saved into the database in order to improve the growing amount of information. The next step is to convert this requested knowledge into a concrete form of knowledge-based system, which would be easy to use. There are several alternatives for a computational implementation of a knowledge base which fulfill the previous mentioned requirements. We found that the well-known concept of case-based reasoning can be the most promising approach in this case. This technique was chosen because it's not only a powerful method for computer reasoning, but also a pervasive behavior in everyday human problem solving. Instead of relying solely on general knowledge of a problem domain, 
or making associations along generalized relationships between problem descriptors and conclusions. Case-based reasoning uses specific knowledge of previously experienced concrete problem situations or cases. Basically, to solve a new problem by remembering a previous similar situation and by reusing information and knowledge of that situation. Because case-based reasoning is heavily dependent on the structure and content of its collection of cases, the problem of deciding what to store in a case, finding an appropriate structure for describing case contents, and deciding how the case memory should be organized and indexed for effective retrieval and reuse is very important. We started from the general idea of case-based reasoning, in which every case had a problem part and a solution part. Considering requests from the database mentioned above, the problem can be seen as the original product, which is wasting energy, and obviously the solution is the energy-saving solution, which come together in the result of the new energy-saving product. If we convert this information into a database structure, three main tables of information can be identified. The product information, the solutions information, and the results information. In these tables, all requested and necessary information should be embedded. To simplify the tables, we extract similar information and put them into separate databases. Consequently, we get three new tables of information. The first one contains product function information, the second one deals with the energy consumption information, and the third one covers the use histogram information. Next, all relations should be made. Every product has at least one product function, but often more, and for every function, multiple products may exist. Also, every solution focuses on one or more specific product functions. Also, the opposite is true, that multiple solutions may exist for one product function. Every product has at least one result, but the result is typically connected to a certain product. Every result is composed of different solutions, and solutions might be used in different results. At last, every product, solution and result have a typical energy consumption and use histogram. To complete the knowledge base structure, extra interlinking tables were added, to avoid the problem of multiple many-to-many -many relations. To conclude this knowledge representation module, we can say that the tool requests information from the knowledge base by demanding the knowledge base manager to look for the needed information in the knowledge base, which is created from three main tables, three specific tables and three interlinking tables. Since you are experts in knowledge representation and management, we would like to learn your opinion if the proposed knowledge representation scheme and the knowledge based organization is feasible and appropriate from an implementation point of view. We are especially interested in knowing if the proposed knowledge representation approach is able to fulfill the functional requirements.